Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Today we are going to be breaking down one of the most popular, realistic military vehicle games out there. This is War Thunder, back in Nam from the Russian Badger, and we are definitely going to be checking out, seeing if Russian Badger, despite being a complete maniac, happens to use some real, genuine military tactics. Let's get into it. Also, do me a favor, guys, hit that subscribe oh, button. You My dream, of, as always, is to hit 100k, and uh, hitting subscribe doesn't cost you anything and helps me get that beautiful silver plaque so I can prove to my parents that I have a real job. We are starting a GoFundMe page for a $1.8 million Tomahawk cruise missile. Under the Second Amendment, I'm allowed to organize myself in a, a well-regulated militia. <laughs> I appreciate that he almost said rebellion, which would have made this illegal. You have an eight. You're allowed to have a militia, sort of, depending on some that you thread some narrow legal fields, right? Because what you can't do is organize a rebellion against the United States. Militia has to serve the U.S. government. Obviously, while it is legal to criticize and engage in political speech, um, actually trying to overthrow the U.S. government is, in fact, a crime, despite what some people may tell you. Ten a warthog <laughs> must protect against government tyranny. My medicinal <laughs> M1A1 Abrams. Medicinal. <laughs> medicinal. Not yes. even recreational. Just medicinal. My recreational ACR with a heartbeat sensor. <laughs> <laughs> just a fucking it's like a ds with the screen broken off tape to the side <laughs> yep been there have not been there have not done that i don't think heartbeat sensors are real valkyries the newest update to war thunder that has everybody feeling like it's not also, guys, do let me know if the audio tends to feel weird or different. I've been trying to get the audio right here. Um, obviously, I have a different setup. It's kind of a portable version of my regular setup. So let me know if you see any issues. Before we get into deep, Oof. thank you to Gaijin Entertainment for sponsoring this video. So if you'd like to try out War Thunder for free for on free. PC, PS4, Xbox One, Mac, and Linux. Wait, wait, really? Linux? Are you? Wow. There's... I gotta say, this look does not look like Vietnam. This looks a lot like Afghanistan, honestly. Um, it was one of the things that was pretty cool about that country is that when I was deployed, they not only had, of course, U.S. military uh, helicopters that would fly combat missions, but non-combat missions, say, uh, ferrying troops and supplies from forward operating base to forward operating base, they would actually contract uh, uh, civilian helicopters, right? Just regular like the ones you see in your city uh flying around they would actually cart people from fob to fob and they would run like a bus route they would circle around fobs in a certain area right and you would of course get to the equivalent of a, a larger fob where you could take a flight to another point and the u.s military was just always running these continuously right so you didn't really need orders to hop from fob to fob you could just sort of show up and do it uh you had to like call ahead for like obviously the helicopters because there's only like six or seven seats but it was so cool to fly over top this country from a helicopter and just look down across the desert it was beautiful again a lot like this it's a link below me that will land you a free premium tank or aircraft and three days of premium time as a bonus and once again and I'm gonna need a mulligan on this video, just like the last video, because a bunch of you are die-hard War Thunder fans that are insanely skilled at the game, and I'm probably gonna say an aircraft, or armament, or acronym wrong, so I'd appreciate just a little bit of slack. Hi Listen, if there's one thing you need to learn about being a creator right away, Russian Badger, it's that you will never get slack, right? Serious players want you to be as good as they are immediately uh i'm learning this with tf2 and i will say it has made me better it has made me think about things in different ways but i've also learned to sit there and when somebody gives me a graduate level tip and i'm out here doing the equivalent of you know baby's first picture books like i'm learning to spell cat in the game all right c-a-t ah good job right so if somebody tells me what a dog is cool you're you're communicating with me at the next level but if i start getting tips that are like the equivalent of of, of reading someone's master's thesis on feline uh you know behavior well you know i'm not there yet so i need you to get me back down to the point where we're like cat is spelled c-a-t fish f 
I S H. God, I had to think too hard on that one. High explosive fragmentation incendiary tracer shell, which is like this is as much death as we could stick inside of a. Yeah. Okay. Wait. Wait. What is this serious? High explosive fragmentation incendiary tracer cell shell. Oh, armor pier. Oh, they're different. Okay. I was going to say high explosive and armor piercing are generally mutually exclusive. High explosive fragmentation, of course, means that it's designed to explode hard and send fragments out, right? Those tiny fragments are meant to kill people, right? Small fragments generally have a high velocity and they will cut right through a person. In contrast, right? Uh, incendiary may, I guess you could also have it be loaded with some explosives that will burn or to be designed to light things on fire. For example, maybe it'll make the fragmentations extremely hot in addition to extremely fast moving. Uh, but armor piercing, right? It can't do the same thing. It has to be, it can't fragment easily. It has to be extremely hard. It needs to maintain its shape even as it punches through armor. So you can't have fragmentation and armor piercing rounds, at least not with current technology. Casing. All right. So <laughs> I got all this death, right? And I want to stick it inside of a shell casing. What do I call it? The name of the game <laughs> with this new update? Helicopters. We've got Cobras. We've got Hueys. We've got Hinds. We've even got a Russian magic school bus that may have actually been stolen from school children. Excuse yeah, that Russian school bus, by the way, you may think, wow, that thing looks reckless. I would never drive that. I have flown in that thing. Those are a, a version of the helicopters that were contracted to fly in Afghanistan. Again, this was back in 2010. Excuse me, sir. Why are you taking our school bus? Yeah, foreign field trip. The door opens <laughs> up immediately, just jumps on, pulls out. Shout out to uh, what looks like one of the bad guys from Metal Gear Solid 2. Got a Makarov and a badge. <laughs> <laughs> and then forces the bus driver off. These helicopters are only playable in tank modes and currently in closed beta, but access is also possible to active players via in-game tasks or the purchase of a pack in the game store. And keep in mind, there's over a thousand playable vehicles in War Thunder. So if you're not into helos, it's no big deal. I know you may be asking yourself, helicopters, how can that possibly be balanced aren't they fucking designed to be tank killers what do you mean armor targets i have 900 millimeters of penetration well yes but the way it works is you can immediately spawn into a helicopter once the round starts but you're limited to using machine guns and rockets because i'm just a teenage dirtbag yeah what he's talking about is the fact that modern helicopters often though not always right uh use guided weapons uh u.s helicopters like the apache they're gonna have electronic systems that let them get a massive distance away from these tanks to the point where the tanks may not even realize a helicopter is in the ao identify a target guide a, a tank killing missile or, or some ordnance onto them and destroy those tanks now if you watched any of the videos from the Russian helicopters in the Ukraine conflict, you realize that the Russian helicopter doctrine doesn't seem to operate the same way. You saw those helicopters flying low and fast, and they were using unguided rockets. So, in fact, this is probably looking like, it looks like all helicopters appear to have adopted this Russian unguided rockets and missiles uh, mentality where you have to get up close and personal. Obviously, for the Russians, this has gone extremely poorly. They have made themselves an incredibly easy target for modern anti-aircraft systems. Baby, listen to... Uh, how many hydras does it take to take down a tank? Okay, we got them. We got them, fella. Which are obviously all unguided munitions requiring you to have solid aim and get significantly closer to your target to engage, which in a nutshell means you're going to get lit up like a Christmas tree almost every time. Holy shit. Again, it's bizarre that this is realistic. Shout out to Gaijin for knowing uh, Russian uh, classified helicopter doctrine before anyone else. Jesus Everyone Christ, they're awesome. Rip the homie. Rip the homie. <laughs> how have the you homie. not died yet? How Yo, have you not died yet? Oh, he's gonna crash. Oh, he's gonna crash. Oh, there we go. Donnie, get the fire extinguisher. 
Die. I'm dropping him. I got two times hit. No, I can't balance out. I stalled. I stole. We're going down, fella. Oh, <laughs> but alternatively, if you Oof. spawn in a tank first, do work, so to speak, by capping flags and killing tanks. I'm gonna fire again. I'm gonna fire right, again. Sir. I got him, target destroyed. Where is your Freebrum superiority now, boy? You then gain Freebrums? Is that like the free Abrams in the game? That's my guess. Spawn points and can bring in a helicopter with guided munitions, like a tow missile, which compared uh. to the Hydra rockets is like upgrading from a Glock to an A-10 Warthog. All right, here we go, boys. Missile away. Let's see if it can actually just tear a tank in half. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Come on, don't move. Don't move. Oh, I think move. I'm watching your rocket go in for that. Bullseye! Yeah, that is, uh, this is, this is, I don't know if it's realistic in the sense that this is the right HUD, but tactically or strategically, this is realistic to how the U.S. helicopter doctrine operates, right? You get standoff, you use, and this is why we talk about combined arms warfare, right? There's still threats to helicopters, right? RPGs, ground forces up close. So what you would want is to have helicopters that can go in and take out tanks because tanks are going to pose a can pose a significant threat to massed ground forces. Those ground forces then can counter anti-aircraft teams that might be in the AO, right? And then the helicopter can support the ground forces. Do you see how these all, if done right, can work together so that you, what you don't have is what we're seeing the Russians do, which is where they push forward with ground forces, but they're unsupported, so the ground forces can be torn up by artillery, right? And helicopters will engage targets, but the ground forces haven't really cleared the AO yet, so there's a lot of anti-air teams. It's all very, very messy, and it's every, it's literally every unit for themselves. It's not a way to fight a modern war. Hi, that's a one shot, baby. Don't move, guy. Don't move. There's one. He doesn't even know. He. I don't even think he can tell. That's two. That's a second T64. I'm just watching you do this. You're just literally just hovering there, pressing like three buttons. That was almost three. Hovering in a helicopter, by the way, guys, very hard to do. It actually demands a lot of skill. That's why these attack helicopters have a gunner and pilot, right? The pilot is focusing on keeping the stable shooting platform more or less stable, while the gunner is uh, identifying, lining up, and engaging targets. Three for three, too, but I hit too high on his tank. This should probably get him. Come on, guy. That's a third T-64. This was literally Ooh. the vehicle equivalent of Kanye plays basketball against disabled children wins 106 to nothing. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> did that, please tell me that didn't really happen. <laughs> Wait, I might actually just change because... Shaq West played Kanye in basketball, though? Fourth guy. Wait, I want to know about Kanye playing Shaq West in basketball. Next. Even though I changed targets. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Line up, boys. Because Whoa, you can actively change it while shot. it's going to somebody that's an easier Jesus. target. That might be easier. I don't actually know if uh, a guided missile will do that. That is an abrupt correction. They're hitting the right spot. That copper wire is so... Jesus that's five, Christ, my guy. Dude. That is five. Uh, this is the definition of there's no such thing as a friendly predator missile, even though it's... Not, that is six. Damn. You see what I'm talking about? This is honestly... If you look at in the first Gulf War and the Iraq War, you saw some helicopter teams get this level of tank kills. And this is how it goes. These tanks just are not equipped to engage this. They are supposed to rely on anti-aircraft defenses, but without anti-aircraft defenses, you're done for. Or anti-aircraft, de de yeah, defenses. And this is why U.S. stealth aircraft are also such an innovation, because stealth aircraft can take out major anti-aircraft sites, right, because obviously they're stealth. They can't be detected by the aircraft's radar. And, of course, the final and first step in the equation is intelligence preparation of the battlefield. And that allows you to know the enemy. You have to find those anti-aircraft sites because if you miss too many of them, it can pose some real trouble for you. So you want to make sure your first step is going, your first defensive measure is knowledge, is understanding and knowing the enemy. Your next step in the equation is, of course, suppressing enemy air defenses using uh, your stealth fighters. Then you get to have ground forces, armor, 
uh, rotary wing aircraft, uh, slower fixed wing aircraft like the Harrier, or I don't even think we still have the Harrier, like the uh, A-10, and then finally, right, then that main body works in sync, in synergy to push into this now compromised battlefield. All the while, the the other two processes, right, deep strike fighters, uh, attacks and intelligence are always being updated the intelligence is always getting better right every enemy you encounter every battle that you fight every time you learn about an enemy unit or its disposition or its troops or its strength you learn more about what's out there and the more your ground forces capture in terms of intelligence the better off your ability to understand the enemy's current disposition will be meaning that your strikes are that much more accurate so victory becomes the victory begets victory as you learn more and as your enemy loses more and more of their troops and their combat uh combat formations they are going to learn less and less because they're literally going to have less eyes and ears on the battlefield that i guess it was a t-54 so that's a little bit of a different he's probably lighter in terms of armor but my god these guys are just getting clobbered Okay, we did it. I got six All right. targets destroyed. Hell Ooh. yes, brother. <laughs> I like your. That is how that goes, guys. Your use of the term clobbered because that wasn't graceful. It wasn't like Elliot. It was literally just smashing the shit out of somebody. <laughs> this is, but that's exactly how it should go, right? You want to make it if you're doing it right. Your your plan should look doesn't need to be the more delicate a plan needs to be the more careful it's timing the more um uh dependent on individual elaborate maneuver the more chances there are for things to go wrong so you want plans that and strategies that are going to be simple and decisive that don't rely on ultra high skill uh operations by individual pilots or you want to set the stage so that by the time those your tanks roll into the battlefield, their biggest dangers have been eliminated. By the time your helicopters deploy, the things that are going to most likely cause them problems are long gone, and they just have to have a shooting gallery, right? You want every force to feel like it's as easy as a shooting gallery um, to accomplish their mission. Obviously, real war doesn't work that way, right? The enemy gets a vote. They're always thinking, fighting, and trying their best to come up with ways to thwart your plans, but you want to create a situation in which you can win decisively. You never want to be in a fight where you think you're going to have to win by the skin of your teeth. That's a sign of, of desperation. And if you only think there's a narrow path to victory, it's very easy for some tiny thing to go wrong. Something silly like one of your uh, tank battalions runs out of fuel because a fueler was got stuck in the mud or uh, a, a whole uh, rifle company got dysentery because some idiot cook didn't sanitize the food properly, right? Silly things like that can destroy a mission if you haven't set conditions properly. <laughs> So now that you have a preview of what's possible, let's take it from the top. Two countries currently have access to helicopters, USA and USSR. Both have one attack and one heavily armed transport chopper, as in American Cobra, Russian Hind, and American Huey, Russian school bus. The helicopters from each country kind of mirror the other country, but there's all kinds of nuances. Like American tow missiles have deeper penetration than Russian Atakas, but Atakas zip through the air nearly twice as fast. So both Interesting. Choppers are the same, yet both choppers are different. The Cobra, <laughs> it's slim. It's FYI, guys, I've literally never heard a chop. Uh, uh, I've never heard a rotary wing aircraft called the chopper in the military. Not once. Maybe in Vietnam they did. Um, I've heard them called their actual their their unofficial nomenclature Apaches, Kiowas. Sometimes I've heard them called Little Birds big birds uh sometimes the civilian aircraft would get nicknamed uh the company so there was one called molson so we nicknamed it molson air you would sometimes have vodka air which was a russian company but never once have i heard them called choppers i've heard them called birds that's about it it's sleek it, it's maneuverable it's got a nice little pail it's like a it's like a well-trained well-fitted boxer and then <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry well-fitted boxer uh, you mean a fit boxer a well-trained and 
well-conditioned boxer, but a well-fitted boxer is a pair of underwear. The hind is like a boat that you gave rotors. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's literally just a boat. Same goes for Huey versus School Bus. The running theme here is American equals agile because they're so damn fast, and Russian equals ruthless because the payload they can carry and unleash really makes you feel like you're flying a tank. This shit flies like a garbage bag in the wind. It's just like... <laughs> Yeah, no, you this dude's slow understand. as fuck. It's like that kid who got blown across the country in that fucking bouncy castle or whatever it was. <laughs> My buddies and I started out by running hydras and flying as much as possible to get the hang of things, which for- what is a Hydra? Some of us happened rather quickly. The whole wait, I gotta wait. balance my position versus the target's <laughs> position kind of has me good. Like, <laughs> there, I got one. That like wasn't so bad. Me. And for others, happened not so quickly. Oh! Whoa. Wow. Yeah, that's what we talked about, man. These missiles, they're not that maneuverable, right? They are, well, missiles. You know, if you want something that's maneuverable, it's going to look like a fighter aircraft. It's going to have lots of ailerons. ailerons. It's going to have lots of wings. It's going to have a bunch of directional, like, thrusters. It's going to have all sorts of stuff. But if you want something to go fast, faster than any aircraft, it's not going to be maneuverable, right? It's going to be able to tweak its trajectory a little bit. That's why you can... In theory, you can bank your way out of a missile, force it to change its trajectory faster than it can, um, or you can confuse a missile, right? If you know its sensors, for example, look for heat signatures, that's why Russian and U.S. helicopters uh, rely on flares. Flares are, of course, individual points of extreme heat that confuse the missile and make it think that maybe one of these flares is an engine, and it will adjust its trajectory and fly off after the flares instead of staying focused on the actual heat signature that the en that is the aircraft engine. <laughs> Shit, he cash. He cash only hope. And he looks like he's actively reading the user manual. Just dump him. Just dump him. <laughs> I'm looking through the manual. Damn, that's a lot of rockets. Oh, all I see is fuses. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, Down Jesus. He Down he goes. Rip the homie. <laughs> okay, so fun fact, guys. The reason helicopters have that tail, right? This is your helicopter. Here's the main rotor. Here's the tail sticking up. Then the main rotor rotates, right? It, it's going to want to start to spin the fuselage. You need something to push the fuselage back into place, right? So that the, you know, the blades spin and friction's going to want to pull the helicopter into that spinning motion as well. So you use that tail rotor to push the helicopter back into place as it's rotating. It's very carefully synchronized and it's essential to flight but you lose that tail rotor and that's what happens you start to spin uncontrollably and you don't actually generate the lift that you need is that the eject button self-destruct initiated oh shit this is a mcdonald's menu <laughs> <laughs> now because all the helicopters are tier 5 or tier 6 vehicles it not only meant that we had press accounts with goofy names to access them Dang. oh badger's boy all right that's what this account name is really you oh my oh, god! Shit. How do you do, fellow content creator? <laughs> <laughs> it feels good being an influencer. <laughs> I wish I had a press account, but I don't know if I want to be called boy. That seems creepy. <laughs> But it also meant that we were playing against tier 5 and tier 6 players, which, to put it bluntly, in honor of adding <laughs> Huey to the game, are natural born killers. If you're not Lord wearing Walker a is. flight suit with an oxygen tank and actively doing breathing exercises in your chair while squeezing your thighs and abdominals, you're not tactical enough. What he's describing, by the way, is when pilots are subject to really strong G-forces, right? G-forces is the term for the fact that when a plane banks, right, it sort of pushes you into the seat. Sort of like when you accelerate in your car real hard, you get pushed back into the seat. So what you what pilots do of course because they're going so fast and the change in their velocity is is you know several orders of magnitude greater than what you can get in say a commercial car well you are going to have such strong g forces that's going to start to force the blood out of your brain and into your feet and unfortunately you don't think with your feet you need your brain to have blood so 
What pilots are trained to do is to squeeze a little bit more, literally and figuratively, uh, squeeze a little more G-forces out of their biology. They're trained to actually flex their thighs, flex their hamstrings, flex their feet in order to force blood back up into their brains. They also experiment sometimes with different types of flight suits that are designed to compress the legs and force blood up in response to stronger G-forces. But it's one of the reasons why when we talk about the future of warfare being drones and drone pilots, it's not just because drones are expendable in a way that pilots aren't. It's because pilots biology, not always engineering, is the constraint for a lot of aircraft. If you didn't have the constraint of having to biologically support a pilot in this supersonic, uh, you know, <laughs> death metal bird, you would have a lot more room to engineer, more, more dangerous payloads, better maneuverability, faster speeds, you would all around just have a lot more room to really turn it into a weapon. Like these Have guys, baby. these guys do not fuck around. So we decided that since using machine guns and rockets on choppers is basically a suicide mission, we would stick the tanks on spawn and always go for the guided missiles once we had enough points. And because we had to use the US or the Soviets at this highest tier of play, it was all about the T-80 slash T-64 and the Abrams. Or, I'm sorry, Mafrebrums. He protect, he attack, but most importantly, he has blowout ammo, right? <laughs> <laughs> medicinal M1A1 Abrams. <laughs> My legally obtained M M1 Abrams. It was prescribed to me. You have a concealed yeah. carry permit for a Huey. <laughs> <laughs> Much like the whole America. Cobra versus Hind dynamic, T80 versus Abrams is more of the same. Like, Americans have nuances in their tactics. Bro, time to get this Medal of Honor. Call the artillery right on top of me. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's actually a youthful strategy that isn't just gonna blow up you and you alone. God damn it, I think you did. We hey! Did it. <laughs> wow. Soviets have nuances in their tactics. We keep throwing enough people at the bullets, eventually, they'll run out of bullets. <laughs> that is disturbingly close to real Russian tactics, unfortunately. <laughs> That's such a bad way to think about it. <laughs> That's but it's Russian so phrase, fucking though. true, dude. <laughs> just people. throw, just keep throwing bodies at them. If we throw enough people at the bullets, die. they'll eventually run out of bullets. This is this appeared to be for a while the Russian strategy in Ukraine, and only by the fact that the entire West started resupplying Ukraine with uh, heavy and advanced weapons. Uh, were they able to sustain the fight and grind the Russian war machine out? But Russia may well have just literally taken massive casualties and still won if Ukraine didn't get the significant support that they did. <laughs> but in the end, they occupied the same role for the same goal. Terminate anything on the ground that isn't friendly and maybe a chopper or two. Though, if I'm being honest, my squad had quite the Abrams preference, and that's probably just a matter of birthplace. <laughs> What is your problem? <laughs> That's like the sound that you make when you're forced to be, you're forced to use a T-80B instead of an Abrams. It goes against Grouse's very genetics. <laughs> Especially when you just cut off your mic. Just... <laughs> <laughs> when you ask me to be a communist. I mean, we tried out all kinds of other vehicles before- That thing looks like it will survive for seconds on a modern battlefield. For the T-80 and the Abrams. You're damn right, this brother. This janky as fuck. <laughs> like look at those guys. Even they look terrified to be in this rolling death trap. <laughs> Isn't it the best that you see, though, Heavenly? Look at the two dudes that are just sitting on the bench. Oh, fuck. Oh, God. <laughs> They just the Russian experience. Vaporized. Like, you it's don't like have enough fires. money for armor to protect both of your gunners, so you just have two backup gunners sitting on a bench <laughs> waiting for them to die. <laughs> but it rapidly became obvious that driving trucks into battle was not it. Literally, a stray 762 punched through my radiator, punched through my co-driver, <laughs> and then took out my fucking gunner. <laughs> like... <laughs> like, it came out of nowhere. Jesus. The dude that it's fired like, it was rotating his tank turret the opposite direction of where I was. Once we stuck with the top tier tanks, it was a natural progression in development. Like, you learn how to consistently win in shorter distance engagements. Yeah, 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 I see him, I see him, I see him. Boom, baby, got <laughs> Pretty soon you can demolish somebody halfway across the map. And Kobe fades back. 
He nails it. There. Ooh, Kobe jokes did not age there well. After playing R. I. P. To the legend. Instances where I almost did too well. Like I would terminate so many baddies on the ground that I wouldn't have enough time or targets to engage in helicopters. I believe in you. You got this, Chief. Come on, come on, come on. I got him! Wow, okay, that's not how a real tank shell is going to operate. It's not going to fly straight like that. It may never reach a helicopter. It may simply not have the velocity. Instead, it's going to travel in a parabola. It's going to arc and start to fall. I got him! Oh my god, I actually hit him! I did not right think there. I was going to do that. Bullseye! That just happened. <laughs> that's an enemy wow. Yeah, that's an enemy. Oh, sorry, I had the I had the guided. Whoops. <laughs> I gotta I gotta switch. I gotta switch. I'm gonna hit his ammo cache ready. Dumbass. And ba boom, baby, got him. Two guys. Damn. Yeet. There's so actually exposed one. dudes right there. Oh no, this guy's just gonna tear me in half. Hopefully he misses. Hopefully he misses. Hopefully he misses. I got him, I got him, I got him. All right. This is impressive, man. And like we talked about, like we've seen, if you know where on a tank to hit, you can really achieve some startling effects. All right. <laughs> If you don't, you're just going to be ineffectually throwing rounds and rockets at heavily armored parts of tanks. Oh, no hey, oh. can he can he actually damage me? A little bit. I gotta go for the dudes. I gotta go for the dudes. Okay, we got the dudes. I think he can. Oh shit! Shoot I think I'm in the spawn. I gotta get out of here. All right, all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit him. Okay, we got him. That's a triple kill, baby. A That's triple. a triple kill, baby. All right, time for it's chopper time. I'm going hind. I'm going Dude, the whole team's in their spawn right now. Hostile team has lost all of its vehicles, of course. Just when I get my <laughs> chopper, of course. Mission accomplished. Oh, oh, poor me. guy. That's the worst <laughs> feeling when you're when your high should, skill is just your really own enemy. Oh, poor guy. Kill me. Kill me. It was a whole different ball game once I could consistently gain shoppers with missiles, and my basic rule of thumb was always buy the best you can. If you did really well on the ground and can afford a hind or a cobra, don't bother with a Huey or a school bus because the attack choppers carry way more missiles, are way faster, and trump them in nearly every way. Does this hind even see me? Oh yeah, he does. He does. He does. Yeah, a game with no light infantry doesn't really benefit from having light infantry transport helicopters. <laughs> no, never mind. Oh, I'm dead now. Oh, I got good hits on him. I got good. Yes, enemy kill assist. Oh, we got him. We got him. We got him. Don't let me down, Hind. Don't let me down, Hind. My Damn, hands are shaking. Oh, still got him. But if you barely did anything on the ground, it can only afford missiles on one of the School transport shoppers, still you can still WMD. be a nightmare for the enemy team, even if you're flying a Russian school bus that looks like it was designed by Jimmy Neutron. Yeah, yeah it, it's, like the it's like the Russian school bus, and it's not even a good school bus. It's like a shitty school bus that you just put a bunch of ATGs on. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Neutron was a domestic <laughs> terrorist, but y'all not, not ready, ready to have, have that, that conversation. conversation. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I don't know anything about Jimmy Neutron, so I can't weigh in one way or the other. Come on down. One shot. Uh, Easy. I really shouldn't be alive this close. I don't know how I'm still alive. There's number two. Oh, I've been discovered. I've been spotted. I've been spotted. This is going to be wobbly. Still got him. Damn. Damn. <laughs> With Miss Frizzle? Unfucking likely. <laughs> 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 with panic, with the freeze. Oh shit! <laughs> Rule of thumb for the Huey versus school bus is that the Huey flies like a dream and allows you to tell stories about being back in Nam. Yeah. Don't crash it. Tell them yeah. the right <laughs> Woo! <laughs> you ever killed a death claw with a tire iron? <laughs> Let me tell you something about Nam. <laughs> and the school bus flies like a. School bus. Getting this Ooh, Russian school bus to hover generally. is the hardest thing in the world. It's like I suddenly just get epilepsy. Well, that's good. That's realistic then. Hover. Hover. Why Why are you spamming this like you're playing Tekken? Just ease up on the throttle, guy. Oh, these Russian pilots. Please. All right. I, I don't think hovering is an option, my guy. I just rock around like I'm in a boat. But please don't think that the missiles and the helicopters make them OP because they are extremely fragile. So if somebody spawns a jet, you're toast. Yeah, so yeah. I have enough for a toe. I have enough for a toe. I'm going to bring in the toe. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That, that jet just came around and just destroyed me. Yeah, you got shit can, big man. All right. I'm out of here. 
Yeah, this is what we talked about. <laughs> Helicopters cannot fight jets. They're just, it's just, I don't think it's possible. They may have like some sort of air to air missile system, but man, tactically, no. This is how it would really go. I'm out of here. Hopefully, I don't hit the blades on the way out. Uh, I think I did. Hey, I'm really glad I got the toe. <laughs> <laughs> Not every time, because you can occasionally capitalize on their mistakes. There's a jet bullet. Okay, yeah. This is... <sighs> it's hard. Yeah, this is what we talked about. It's rare and hard. And it may just be this game balancing that they even make it possible for a helicopter to take out a jet. Hey, by the way. A jet that's yeah, not on the ground. Oh, I got a critical hit on him. He's going to go down. Yeah, there's no way. A actual jet, not a prop-driven fighter like this, an actual jet is going to be flying higher and way too fast for this helicopter to ever line up a shot. Pork is pulled I up. hit him again, I hit him again. Wait, go why down, is my, boy, why is go my, down, why boy. Why is my plane going down? No, he's going down. I'm going to get him here. Come on. Go down, go down, go down, right, you fat go. man. Hold on. I got to really pull up here to not die. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. Okay, we did it. We did it. <laughs> but most of the time, just like the Abrams and anti-air dumping rounds at you from the ground, they're gonna tear you in half like a movie ticket. You're basically just driving a ground A-10. Yes, Jesus. a ground A-10 is a good way to label it. Instead of a warthog, it's a groundhog. Get it? Ooh, Ooh. That's, actually, that's, mm, that's, that's a good one. A good one. That, that's actually a good one, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Compression, all the, oh, the comp see that? See that? You I got hit by like a single blasted? 762 and now Jesus. all of my rotors are gone. Hold I mean, this is the thing, right? Helicopters, they're too light to carry armor or meaningful armor. And so what you're stuck with is the fact that a lucky shot, probably not with a 7.62, that's a little light. Um, because remember, a round's going to lose velocity as it comes up from the ground. But a helicopter, it can, it has a lot of systems, a lot of which are very sensitive. So it's certainly possible that even relatively minor damage to the right systems will cripple or kill an aircraft. Hold on. How the fuck? I can I'm salvage trying. this. I can still fight. Oh, no, my armament's gone too. I still got a cannon. I still got a cannon. Oh my cannon. god, you don't have a fucking hind rotor. <laughs> a final item to note is that they have announced that more nations will be receiving helicopters. Nice, that'll be cool. Beyond the US and Russia. I'm still extremely bad at flying the Deutschland Dorito. Uh, I'm oh, sorry, shit. bees. Oh god, we collide <laughs> with each other. Dorito down, fellas. Dorito <laughs> down. Led Dorito. Well. I still don't oh understand why all Russian tanks have logs on the back of them. Is this, is this a Russian spoiler? I, I can't even conceive of why they would have that. I feel like it, this is a Russian it's, spoiler. It's either... Is it some sort of camouflage a mounter? Rusty spoiler, or that's like a bench for unit transport. The metal, <laughs> the metal mountings make this look... Definitely like a spoiler. And I still feel like they should give you a small when you bail out of a helicopter. Siege of Shanghai style. Yes. You're jumping out of a transport helicopter. You immediately small. Your back blast kills your entire crew. <laughs> Wait, what? Why would you have a... What? <laughs> but you hit the <laughs> F-80 so it doesn't matter. And that's about it. It's about like a thing. Okay, guys, that was actually pretty good. I enjoyed that. Let me know if you like this format. Let me know how the audio went. Please hit subscribe. And thanks to our patrons of Patreon. Let me give these guys the shout out that they uh, so richly deserve. Seriously, guys, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. You guys make this whole thing possible. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.